Yesterday I posted a video on making this bridge. So I thought today I'd post another one on how to mount the bridge to the instrument. Uh, this can be done with common measuring tools, but I do a lot of them. So I've made this tool. Um, I actually made several of these because I have separate ones for right and left handed and different scale length guitars. But this little edge right here snaps right into the bridge saddle slot. And this end hooks over the nut end of the fingerboard. And I place this on the fingerboard and match the center line of the jig with a center line that I've previously marked on the fingerboard. And you'll notice I've got some low tack tape here. Uh, that's not just to protect the top, but it's also going to help me define some things that I'll show you that I need to do later on. So once I get this all centered up, the bridge sits exactly where I want it. And at that point, I'm going to put some masking tape over the wings to hold this thing still. And then we'll move on to the next step. Now that my bridge is taped down, I want to create registration. That is, I want to lock the bridge in position so that when I glue it down, it's not going to shift. There's going to be no squeezing around and moving because of the glue being in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my call. This is called a bridge patch call. This is made when the guitar is open right after the top is finished being braced up. And it's made to fit the underside of that top. So I'm going to slip that in there and find its position, which sometimes is elusive. There it is. And I'm going to drill a 1 16th inch hole at the end of the bridge saddle slot. And I'm going to put that in position. And I'm going to come over here at the other end of the slot and drill a second one. And there, now my bridge is registered. When I glue it down, I'll use those pins to locate it, and that'll be the end of it right there. While I was off camera, I removed the bridge, and I doubled up this layer of tape here, because now we're going to have some real fun. I'm going to carefully, and I mean carefully, cut around this bridge, cutting through the tape. And I want to scratch that finish, but I don't want to cut down into the wood. I don't want to inlay the bridge in the top. I just want to get a scored mark in there so that when I take the finish off, that finish will break right there. And I have to be especially careful on the end grain because it's easier to cut into the top. So. Assuming that I've done all of that correctly, and I believe I have, I'm going to remove my bridge, and if all has gone well, that tape should come up off there. Now it's time to remove this lacquer from the area where the bridge is to be glued, because the the glue won't stick to the lacquer at all. So this has to be removed and I suppose there's several ways to do it but the way I do it is with this hand scraper made out of a common saw blade and sharpened for the purpose and I hate this but it goes like this. One of the final preparations I do before I glue the bridge down is to go around the perimeter of the bridge and scrape a few thousandths of an inch of material away from there with this little scraping tool I have. This is another one made out of an old saw blade. And I just go down through there all the way around the bridge and just take two or three passes with that scraper. And the reason for doing that is because if that finish interferes with the edge of that bridge, it may tend to hold it up off the surface of the wood. 
So I clear away just a little bit of that undersurface to make sure that I get perfectly good contact. Okay, we're ready to glue this bridge down, so I'm just going to walk through the process and see if I can comment along the way. Obviously, the first thing we need is some glue. I use conventional yellow glue. There's uh, really no reason to use anything else as far as I know. Some builders like to use hide glue because it releases a little more easily than this will. But I'm not an expert with hide glue, so I feel the need to avoid it a little bit. Okay, got the glue on the bridge, but now we gotta get the glue off my fingers before I make a mess. And now I'm sliding my registration pins into position. And I'm placing the bridge. So the registration pins go down first and the bridge drops down. And then I have to put my call back in there in position and get ready with a clamp. So I'm finding my call position and as soon as I have that, I drive the pins right down into it and I've drilled larger holes in that so that they'll pass down through there. And my first clamp that goes in goes to the center. And I have a call here. The underside of the call has a 16 inch radius to conform to the shape of the bridge. And you really don't have to put as much pressure on this as you might think. Uh, Aliphatic resin glue only requires 10 pounds per square inch, so you don't need to really get on it real real tight. And here I have calls for the wings, and my second clamp goes down. And I'm already seeing nice squeeze out on the bridge, so we know that we're conforming to the top well. That's a very good sign. Just what we want to see. And so we snug that down and then we go in with the final one. Sort of particular work, but it's not it's not that tough. Uh, excuse the cat. She likes to come into the shop on a cold day like today, and I haven't got the heart to leave her outdoors. Okay, so we're all glued down, but we're not quite finished. I don't know if it shows on camera, but there's a little bit of glue squeezing out of there. And so I have to give that about 10 minutes to set. And that glue will become leather hard. And when it does, I can take this tool and go around the bridge and remove that glue and it'll come off. If I do it right now, it'll just spread the glue out all over the top and make a big mess. So in a, another 10 minutes, we'll come back and finish that up. So the bridge is completely glued down now and I have removed all of the squeeze out and stuff that naturally comes out of them. The clamps will remain on this for at least an hour, but I'll probably leave them on even overnight because we're getting toward the end of the day. Uh, when completed, this is a jumbo guitar, a smaller jumbo, 17 inch. This will be, I think, guitar number 131, and you'll be sure to see pictures of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.